If you're out in the fields looking at trains and you want to know right then and there what kind of locomotive you're looking at, then there are quite a few indicators you can use to determine this. GE or EMD? This is an age-old question rail fans have been asking themselves for years. Some people know the magic of telling them apart and others have to consult online documentation. If you're one of those people who wants to know right on the spot, this video can be of great usefulness. Now I want to make it clear I'm not trying to copy what Distant Signal has done with his very useful video on this subject. My video will be strictly discussing the radiators found on the rear of locomotives, and I still recommend you check out his video for further information. This is going to be all about GE and EMD road switchers. No Alcos, no Baldwins, no EMD SWs, no Streamliners, no GE Tunners, and no Cowell units. Those engines have very different designs from the regular road switcher, and it would take me hours to explain all of their radiators. Feel free to take this with a grain of salt. I'm no rail expert, I'm just some Midwestern train obsession haver that's just regurgitating stuff I've observed over my rail fanning experiences. Nonetheless, this video can still be of great use to you. Let's start with General Electric. All GE locomotives have flared radiators. Most of the U-boats don't have this, but some of the higher horsepower models do. The U-boats and the Dash 7s have fairly small radiators with rounded corners. The Dash 8, Dash 9, and AC4400 CW has slightly larger radiators. Their corners are more squared off, and the wall directly below the radiator tapers out as it goes up. The great AC6000 CW was so powerful that they had to make the radiators bigger. This was the beginning of this larger style of radiators on GE locomotives. Besides being generally bigger, notice how the radiator now hangs over the back wall. Now the Evolution series also used this style, but it didn't hang over as much. The 6000 ran really hot, and it looks like they had to add an extra 2 or 3 feet over the back. Well, either that or cooling problems. I guess the modern Jeevos with their lesser 4400 horsepower didn't need as much heat dissipation surface area. The new tier 4 Jeevos have an even bigger radiator, this time being taller not longer. The two flat faces on the top meet at a higher peak than on the non tier 4 Jeevos. Similar to how all General Electrics have flared radiators, nearly all EMDs have flat radiators, with some exceptions. There are essentially six different kinds of radiator designs EMD has used over the years. The first is an older type found on first generation road switchers. It has three distinct vent sections and is mounted flush with the wall. This can be found on the GP7, GP9, GP18, and GP20 models. All of the Super Duty variants of these locomotives had slightly larger radiators. They extended out a few inches and usually had four distinct vent sections. This was found on the SD7, SD9, SD18, and SD24. The third type is the most common type of EMD radiator style found on the engines. It is a large rectangular section mounted flush on the wall of the body on either side. Some common models that have this include the GP28, 30, 35, 38, 39, 40, 50, 60, the SD28, 35, 38, 39, 40, 50, 60, 70, 70i, 70m, 70 max, 75m, 75i, and all the Dash 2 variants. To remove the larger amount of heat created within the SD45, by the 20 cylinder 645, EMD created flared radiators towards the roof of the locomotive. These aren't as big as the flared radiators on GE's or SD70 Aces, but they are much more noticeable than EMD's standard radiators. These can be found on the GP40X, GP39X, SD45, and SD45 2. Now we all know Southern Pacific love their tunnels, and because of this they had Electromotive create custom variants of the SD45 that had modified radiators to better suit their tunnels. This was the SD45 T-2, and they also later made the SD40 T-2. The air intake was relocated down to the catwalk, 
and the fans were hidden below the radiators rather than on the roof. The SD70 series of locomotives can be a bit confusing. Many models have the standard flat radiators, but some later production have flared radiators. As mentioned before, the SD70, 70i, 70m, and 70mac have the flat style. The 70m and 70mac also have versions produced with SD45 style radiators. They extend all the way to the back and don't stick out as far as the type found on the SD70 ACE. Speaking of which, later SD70 models have much bigger radiator sections. This type extends out further than the SD45 covering the whole walkway. Notice how it does not extend all the way to the back. This is a good indicator of a locomotive being an EMD rather than a General Electric. Models with this type include the SD70 ACE, SD70 ACS, SD70 M-2, SD80 MAC, and SD90 MAC. The Tier 4 SD70 ACE has the same radiator style, but it's a little bit longer and has one extra cooling fan on the roof. Now, if you're interested in sticking around a bit longer, let's play a little bit of a game. I'm going to show you some footage I've filmed over the last year of locomotives going by and see if you could determine what kind of locomotive it is just by looking at the radiators. No pausing the video and looking at the model number printed on the side. That's cheating. This first train here I caught during August on the river subdivision of Winnipeg, Manitoba. First we've got this dead giveaway, large radiators that flare out the sides and do not extend all the way to the back of the locomotive. This is an SD70 M-2. Here we have General Electric style radiators that flare outward but are not very thick, meaning that this is an older GE, and indeed it is a Dash 9. Finally we have an older looking EMD, and we know this because radiators are flat. And specifically, this is an SD40-2W. Here's the second train. It's one I caught on the 4th of July in Richmond, Indiana. It is a Norfolk Southern Intermodal train, and one that is particularly exciting because it's being led by one of Norfolk Southern's heritage units. Right off the bat we have another SD70 ACE giveaway, the flared radiators that do not extend all the way to the back. Then we have another General Electric with thin flared radiators, this is an older one, and indeed it is, it's a Dash 9. And finally, another flared radiator that doesn't go all the way to the back, it's another SD70 ACE. Our third train is one I spotted on July 24th in Sioux Falls, South Dakota comprises of four BNSF engines that are working hard to pull a very long grain train. First we have what appears to be a General Electric. It has the flared radiators that extend all the way to the back and hang over just a little bit, and the radiators are of the thicker variant so we know that it is an Evolution Series. This is an ES44AC. Followed by another SD70 ACE, another dead giveaway. Radiators flare out but don't go all the way to the back. Then we have another one that looks just like the one up front. Flared radiators extend all the way to the back, fairly thick ES44C4. And finally we have an older General Electric. The radiators are very similar but a bit thinner. This is a Dash 9. And for the final one, we have a train I spotted on the RCP&E in Rapid City on April 16th, 2022. It comprises of three older looking engines, and I will admit the standard cabs and the axle configurations definitely give it away if you know about that stuff, but try to ignore them and figuring it out just off the radiators.
First and foremost, we have an older looking EMD. The radiators are flat, and this is an ST40-3, followed by another one that looks identical. It's another ST40-3. But here is a really old looking one, and if you pay attention to the radiators, you'll see that it is of the older EMD variant that extends out a few inches and has four distinct vent covers. This is an SD9. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, so I hope you found it useful and entertaining, and I hope to see you in the next one.